Hey guys, Ash here from CurseForward.com and welcome to episode 11 of Android Tips on CurseForward TV. So the last few episodes we've been going through uh, the top 20 must-have root apps uh, for rooted Android devices. So we've covered 10 apps so far and we're going to look at a few more in this video. So let's get started. So guys, the first app for this episode is 6 Axis Controller. So what this does is it lets you uh, to use your PlayStation's DualShock 3 6-axis controller with uh, your Android device. So this works for a lot of uh, devices but not every Android device out there. So prior to buying this app, uh, do download the compatibility checker from the market and check whether your device is supported. Alright, it's pretty simple to use. Uh, you need a USB OTG cable. Even if you don't have a USB OTG cable, you can still uh, configure your PlayStation 3 controller to work with your Android device. But the process is a little bit longer. I have a video on how to get that done. If you guys don't have a USB OTG cable, you can check that out. But as of now, I've got a USB OTG cable here. So just connecting it. Let me just zoom out a bit. Alright, just connecting it. I've got... Uh, the cable to connect my PS3 joystick here all right connected enough all right the lights are blinking hitting start here all right uh, hit change IME select six axis controller hit pair controller pair okay so that's done all right there it's done now so Alright, so I'm just going to disconnect it and you can see it's still hooked up. Well, let's just remove this now. So there, as you can see, a lot of games can be configured to run with the six axis controller so again guys it's uh explaining the exact configuration and how to get it set up is beyond the scope of this video because that takes about eight to ten minutes on its own so i've got a separate video like i said on how to perfectly get the six axis controller set up and working with your device so that the link to that video is also there in the description so feel free to check it out if you're interested in that so guys, the next app on the list is Samba Network File Share or Samba File Sharing. So how this works is, the first thing you do uh, is open this app up, just go into settings and enable password, just type in any password you want. Let me set it as QWERTY. Alright, give, give yourself a username, Galaxy, and go back hit menu and hit enable just give it a few seconds uh, the app is a little bit on the lower side I mean slower side but just don't worry about it alright so now it says enabled don't worry, don't worry about the not running part just on your PC uh, open up uh, network and hit refresh And there you see Android pops up. Double click on it. You'll be asked for a username and password. So now if we enter Galaxy and password QWERTY. So there you go. I can access my SD card. So what do I have on my SD card? Include, see, this is the screencast clip that we just recorded. Okay, let me use game player. So there it is. It's pretty simple and uh, this is available. I mean, you can transfer stuff to and from your Galaxy phones, especially using other apps like, say, for example, the keys are. But... With this, you can actually stream uh, what was on your phone and uh, 
overall I find it a little bit better than Keys Air uh, as far as the interface goes, uh, as far as the ease of access goes. So again, a must-have app for anybody who, who owns a rooted phone. So guys, sometimes thanks to the device we have or the country we are from or even the uh, operator that we desire to use, there are some apps that are not accessible to us. So uh, as long as you're rooted, this shouldn't be an issue because we've got an app called Market Helper. So what this does is it lets you select whether you, uh, it lets you emulate a different device. It lets you uh, fool uh, the Play Store into thinking that you're a different device or you're from dif or you're from a different country or you're using a different uh, network provider so say for example right now I can spoof this phone into say an HTC One X Plus or I can even spoof it into a tablet so spoof spoofing it into an XS7 again I can choose any country I want so I'm from India so let me instead choose Japan all right and whatever operator from there say Docomo and now I hit activate all right grant super user privileges I love access I love access again so now uh, the device is registered uh, as a Nexus 7. How do you confirm that? So you just have to go into your account on Google Play. So now hitting refresh on the page shows now shows now I've, uh, registered a named device. Asus Nexus 7 NTT Docomo last used 10th April 2013. So now if you if you want to go ahead and change things back again go into Market Helper. Uh, select everything as restore hit activate so now again just go to Google dashboard and there you see the device is back to i9300 so that's market helper for you guys it's useful in case you are in a region or or you have a device or a network of net, network provider that's not letting you access uh, certain apps so this is the workaround for that so guys the next app on the list is titanium backup in the simplest sense titanium backup can back up and restore anything you want all right but once you look into it it's got a lot more options Right from uninstalling unwanted uh, system apps, say uh, you're with a certain network provider and they, they ship, it, ship the phone to you with a lot of apps, bloatware that cannot be uninstalled by itself, Titanium Backup can uninstall it for you. Say for example, All Shacast is something that cannot be uninstall, uninstalled by default, but I can uninstall it from here. Apart from this, if there's some, um, some app that you don't want to uninstall, you can still go ahead and freeze it. So you can freeze the app, you can have multiple backups of the app and you also have tons of extra features like auto syncing, uh, you, can, uh, you can sync with a Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, uh, the, choose the backup folder location and a ton of features. Again guys, uh, Titanium Backup is not something that can be covered in a few minutes, uh, you know, in a list video. I've got a separate video on all the features of titanium backup and exactly how, how you need to back up and restore and uh, you know manage profiles and so on uh, that's about a 15 minute video in itself so the link to that video is there in the description as well so the basic usage of titanium backup is to back up all your apps and data as well so say for example you, you, you've done 20 levels of Angry Birds you flash a new custom ROM you restore it you can continue from level 21 you can also schedule your backups. You can have uh, automated backups happening at certain times. You can also do uh, quite a few batch processes. Say for example, you can back up all your user apps, all system data, all user apps and system data. You can redo backups of just new app versions or just modified data. That is if you've uh, uh, any app that you've changed, if there's anything else. Say for example, you've done a few more levels of uh, Angry Birds. 
that is modified data the, the data for the app has been modified so that will get uh, uh, what do you say backed up when you do this so again for restore you've got manipulate data recovery mode and install delete backups and this is a very extensive app it has tons of features if you want more information on titanium backup feel free to check out my full review of titanium backup with instructions on how to get started and how to use it so that's titanium backup for you so guys let's take a picture and now delete it so deleting something in error by mistake happens a lot it happens to the best of us it happens uh you know once in a while it does uh well this app if you're rooted there's this app called disk digger this app can actually help you get the deleted photo back so here uh, i have my photos saved to the external sd card and that's from where i deleted it so i'm just going to go ahead and select my external sd card and hit scan device so over here we can also add some filters so this is a jpeg file so i'm gonna remove png and mp4 off and add a minimum file size and hit ok so this will take about five minutes uh, to finish scanning so i'll be back with you guys once the scanning is done so there you go guys halfway through uh it has recovered the picture that i deleted so you can go ahead save it as in select it first and then save it so I'm saving it to SD card zero or you can email it directly from the app as well. All right. This doesn't essentially guarantee recovery of any photo that you've deleted, but it's a safe bet to say any photo that you've deleted recently, you can recover it. And as far as uh, recovery of MP4 goes, it's still experimental. So that's this digger for you guys. So guys, that's all the time we have for this episode of Android Tips on Cusp Power TV. In the next episode, we'll go ahead, check out the final five apps of our top 20 rooted apps for rooted Android devices. So before you go, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. And again, keep in mind, every time you hit the like or subscribe button, it increases the odds of YouTube suggesting this video to more people. So help me out there. Hit like and subscribe before you leave. The link to the next episode of Android Tips is annotated onto this video. So you can go ahead, click that, or you can find it from the description. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you liked the video. And I'll catch you in the next episode of Android Tips on Cusp for Our TV. So stay subscribed, and I'll see you guys soon. This is Ashio from CusPower.com signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.